The Bengals offensive line has been a topic of discussion for not just months, but years, seasons, and it's been a weakness. But the coaching staff, well, they think that's going to change this season. Brian Callahan, Zach Taylor, you'll hear from both of them. Plus, get my thoughts on the depth of the Bengals O-line room. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and make sure you check out RivertownInquiry.com. Happy birthday to Doug, by the way. But Doug and his crew, they do a wonderful job of giving you affordable, quality merchandise. And whether it's something you're looking for, maybe to go to an FC Cincinnati game, maybe you're looking because Great American Ballpark's been popping recently, a record number of people went over 126,000 went to, to the series against the Braves. And there were three really good games or of course, orange and black swag. Well, he has you covered at rivertown inquiry.com. Let's dive in because the Bengals offensive line and rightfully so has been such a topic, such a talking point every off season, really since the 2015 season. And, and since then it's been a topic I've been in this business. It just, it's always evolving, always changing. And yet the results for the most part have been the same. It's been their worst unit over the past nearly decade. Now eight seasons, certainly of the Joe Burrow era. And and let's limit it down to the Joe Burrow era. Looking at this room. And I know there's been debate about Jonah Williams and Jackson Carmen and Lyle Collins and trade one of these guys or do that or do this or, Maybe find a Cordell Volson replace like Dalton Risner. Maybe you could go sign him. All of those things, right, have been discussed this offseason. And I think a big part of that is because we're almost conditioned now to expect the worst from the Bengals' offensive line. And I'm not saying that's wrong because they've been bad for a long time. But there's confidence inside the building that the Bengals' offensive line is going to be much improved this season, certainly the best that it's been during the Joe Burrow era or the Zach Taylor era. Let's first start with Brian Callahan. He joined me on Locked On Bengals. Make sure you check out that full conversation. Here's Brian on the Bengals offensive line room. It's, I think it's safe to say it's, it's the best group uh, from top to bottom that we've had in, in our time here going into year five. Um, you know, really strong, uh, big interior players. You know, Orlando, you've seen him. He, he's, a, he's a huge human being. Um, that's always a good thing, uh, but he can move too. You know, these guys can all move well too for their size. And so just, to, just that feeling of knowing that uh, we got guys with experience, guys that have started, um, we've invested resources in the offensive front. Um, and, and those guys have, have really come together well. And so I just feel really good about uh, the direction we've headed, the players we've added and the players that we have. And I think that uh, Jonah's going to do a great job uh, competing on the right side. Um, you know, LC's coming off an injury, so it's always nice to have uh, someone like LC coming off an injury at some point. You know, you still got another guy that's played 10 years in the NFL, and uh, obviously you got Jackson, and then we got a slew of guys that have played for us um, that are in those competing for for other spots on on the offensive front. So uh, it's deep, it's talented, um, it's experienced, and so those are all things that that matter. I think when you're playing offensive line, and uh, you add a premier player like Orlando, obviously makes it feel even better. So. Um, got a ton of confidence in those guys. The best, the deepest two words that I would certainly use to describe it. And I've penciled in Jonah Williams as the starting right tackle. I know some of you don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to debate about that or discuss that right now. But let's just say those are the five, right? Orlando Brown Jr., Cordell Volson, Ted Karras, Alex Kappa, and Jonah Williams. When has there been a year when you've had a Lyle Collins that might be ready to go certainly for the regular season, but at some point this season, when has there been a time where you feel really good about Jackson Carmen? They brought in Cody Ford for a reason and th really liked him pre-draft and think that he could be a, a, a rotational piece. They re-signed Max Sharping, who got some valuable time last year. They have all these guys. I mean, that's just not – I just named nine guys. And that's not including guys that have gotten a, a ton of playing time, Akeem Adeniji in recent years has played a lot. So it, this Bengals offensive line room is deep. I think Ben Brown is sneaky behind Trey Hill, uh, maybe pushing. He's an undrafted free agent last year signed with the team. 
And, and so you're talking about an SEC guy. He's played in big games. Could he push for a roster spot? Could Jackson Kirkland push for a roster spot? Deontay Smith is still on the roster too. Like there are a lot of guys. And I, I think that, that's the part of this where I, I look at it now, and I'm not saying that all these guys are going to make the team. I'm not saying that they don't have their flaws. But when you can name linemen six through eight or nine and say, man, if, if Jackson Carmen needs to play a game or two, you feel really good about it. Heck, some of you think he should start. If Lel Collins needs to come in and, and play, obviously, if he's healthy, we think he can do that at a pretty high level. Like, there aren't many offensive line rooms in the NFL that you can say that about. So it's been the Bengals' biggest weakness. But now I look at it, and I think it's a pretty deep position group. Not perfect. Would you love to have more? Absolutely. You would always love to have more. But I, I think this thought process coincides with what Zach Taylor had to say about how much talent they do have on this roster. It's the best we've had. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's hard in, in pro football now to have, <clears throat> you know, I think as strong as a 53 man roster that we could potentially have. I, I just think it is the way the salary cap's built and you got to acquire young players and hope that they can step up quickly. And um, again, some of these guys still have a long ways to go to be the caliber player that, that we intend on them being. Um, but I've been really excited just watching some of these position groups work. And um, you just really, you kind of think through where the roster is at the 90 man and, and you are really encouraged with top to bottom. There's, there's, no players that don't be, don't belong here. Like you, you can oftentimes get on a 90 man roster. It's everyone belongs here and has a role. And I'm excited to watch all these guys compete in training camp. And it remains to be seen if they'll add any other pieces. But overall, roster depth is is really good right now. I mean, there are going to be some good players on this team right now that don't make that final 53 man roster that might get traded or end up on the practice squad or end up playing elsewhere because of the Bengals. There's just so much competition and, and it's, it's wild to think about, but, and, and I'll go over defense. I'll go over some other positions here since we're in the off season and we can take some time to look at it, but this offensive line room is deep and, and I feel pretty confident in a lot of those guys. Now we may disagree with who we have starting. That's fine. Let's say you don't think Jonah Williams should start. Okay. Well, guess what? How great a depth of, of, of a depth piece would that be? And I don't think that's going to happen. But if it did, whew, that's a heck of a depth piece. A guy who can play both tackle spots and he's training at right tackle right now. That's what he's used to uh, this offseason, at least. And he's played left tackle as an entire NFL career. So he could play either one. And I, I think that's the, the only question I really have is Lyle Collins. Because if they can keep him on the roster, what a valuable piece. Just in case Orlando Brown Jr. gets nicked up. If he does... You take Jonah and you say, all right, you're going to left tackle and Lyle Collins right tackle when it's time. So hopefully Orlando Brown Jr. doesn't. Hopefully he has an all pro year and protects Joe Burrow's blind side and they're able to do things play action wise, certainly deep passing game, seven step drops, all of these things, <clears throat> excuse me, that in recent years they haven't been able to do because of the offensive line play. I would love that. I hope it happens. Obviously you hope that they can open up Holes on the ground as well for Joe Mixon and company. So we'll see if that happens. But overall, I think this Bengals offensive line, it's been a weakness for so many years, but my expectation for the 2023 Bengals offensive line is much like Brian Callahan's. It's much like Zach Taylor's. I expect this unit to be a strength. I think they have the talent. I don't see any glaring weaknesses or holes. Cordell Volson has added size, weight, strength, and should be able to be even better after impressing as a rookie and I expect Jonah Williams to, to be at his absolute best this season as well, or whoever ends up winning that right tackle job. Because if Jonah gets beat out, then that means Jackson Carmen balled, or that means that Lel Collins improved it, it, during his recovery, made it a miraculous recovery, and is playing at a high level. So fine, you take that all day. Point is, this is first world problems. It's a great problem to have in the trenches, and the Bengals haven't had that in quite some time. For more, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, plenty of other videos coming your way this week little topics like this that i want to hit on clips i want to play for you and share so make sure you hit that subscribe button ring the bell if you want more bengals coverage make sure you check out allbengals.com and the locked on bengals podcast for andrew fox miller our channel coordinator 
I'm James Rapine signing off for now on CBT, Cincinnati Bengals Talk.